right, this is number 19 on your review. This is a hexagon, and we're going to try to solve for the area of the hexagon, uh, given only the length of a side. So keep in mind, the formula that we're going to be using for any of these uh, regular polygons, is the area is one-half of the apothem times the perimeter. Now, if you'll remember, the apothem is the distance between the center of the circle to the side of the circle, and of course that meets at a perpendicular. So that's perpendicular to the side, uh, which creates a 90 degree angle, and we're going to use that to our advantage uh, by creating a right triangle here to solve this problem. Um, so because we need the apothem and the perimeter, we can use this 28 uh, here side. We can use the side of the 28 to figure out what the perimeter is. Of course, in a regular polygon, all sides are the same. So we can solve the uh, perimeter pretty quickly uh, by taking that 28 and multiplying it by 6. And so if we take 28 and multiply by 6, uh, that number is uh, 168. So our perimeter is 168. And now we just need to find the apothem. Now you might already have this memorized, what this right triangle is going to be when we, already, uh, when we solve it here. Uh, this will be a 30, 60, 90 triangle, and we can use some shortcuts. Um, but we're going to talk about how to do the shortcut, and we're going to talk about how to use the uh, tangent function. Because we'll be using uh, the, we, you can also use trigonometry to solve this problem. But first of all, we need to know what the angles are here. So uh, if you don't already know what the angles are here, there are a couple of different ways that we can solve this. Um, first of all, you can solve for one of these central angles. If you uh, keep in mind, a hexagon can be separated into six congruent equilateral triangles, okay? And because that's the case, we know that these central angles, just like they are in a circle, these central angles here have to add up to 360 degrees. If we were to separate this out, they all have to add up to 360 degrees. So we can take 360 degrees. And we can divide by the number of these angles that would be in the center. And of course, since there are six sides, there are six triangles, and there would be six angles. So we can divide by the number of sides, which is six. Each of these central angles then would be 60. Okay. So if we had a triangle right here as well, this main angle right here would be 60 degrees. Um, so we could also find these exterior, or the, sorry, they're not exterior, the interior angles here of the shape. Not the central angles, but we're talking about the interior angles here. And there is a formula that helps us figure out what the total of all angles are. And then we can use that total and divide by the number of angles they are, because they're all going to be the same. And we can find out each, each one. So that is that if we take 180 times the number of sides minus 2, and divide by the number of sides or angles we have, that'll give us each individual angle here. This top part is the total of all interior angles, and we divide by how many there are, that'll give us each one. So in this case, we have six sides. N is the number of sides, by the way. We have 180 times 6 minus 2, divided by 6, which is 180 times 4, and that is 720 divided by 6, so each one of these angles out here is 120 degrees. So all these angles here are 120. Okay. So now we're going to use one of these two angles. Uh, now keep in mind, this central angle, if that angle is 60 degrees, when we draw that apothem down, um, that basically splits that angle into halves. So instead of being a 60 degree angle here, we have a 30 degree angle. So when we create our right triangle by drawing this radius to the uh, vertex down here at the bottom, this angle that's inside of our triangle is half of the 60th, so that's going to be 30 degrees. This angle down here, again, we found out that this whole angle here is 120 degrees, so if we split that in half, because that radius, again, is going to split that angle in half as well, then this has to be half of the 120, which is 60 degrees. So here we have a 30, 60, 90 triangle. And so we can use some shortcuts here. Um, we can either, uh, if you'll note, if we know what this shortest leg of our right triangle is, we can multiply that by the square root of 3 and get the apothem. This part of our triangle, of course, is half of the whole side here. 
and if the whole side is 28, then this side has to be 14. So we can take the 14 times the square root of 3 to get our apothem. So our apothem is 14 times the square root of 3. And if you wanted to put that in your calculator, 14 times the square root of 3 is 24.25. Now, if you can't remember that shortcut, that's perfectly fine. You can also use trigonometry to solve that problem. You could also take the tangent of the 60 degree angle or the tangent of the 30 degree angle. Either way you want to do that, You'd, your ratio would just be opposite. But you can take the tangent of the 60 degree angle, and that's going to be equal to the ratio of the opposite leg over the adjacent leg. Again, we're using tangent because we're just using the legs of the triangle but that would be a over 14. And so when we cross multiply, we get that our apothem is equal to uh, 14 times the tangent of 60, which is gonna give you exactly the same answer of 24.25. So now we've got the apothem of 24.25, we've got the perimeter of 168, so we're just gonna plug that into our area formula which is one half the apothem 24.25 times the 168, which is the perimeter. And that's the same thing, by the way, as uh, apothem times perimeter divided by 2, which comes out to 2,037 uh, square meters.